Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and as you can tell, I'm in a hotel room again. I got the same kind of looking thing behind me. I can never tell angles, though, because I just swore when I've done other videos that the TV is actually, well, my right hand is over here, so it is over there, but I always thought it showed over here. And I wanted to show you my new Fitbit bracelet, which is red. Red is my favorite color. I'm wearing red today as well. This came... And this is going to help me because something I haven't mentioned before is that every once in a while these bad boys fall off. I don't know why. Maybe it's not clicked on tight enough or whatever. And the black one, I was just always, it was hard to see. Other people were finding it. One time it was falling off in the car. I saw it then. But every other time someone else saw it. And if they hadn't, I'd have just been walking off without it. And at 100 bucks a shot, no, I don't want to lose this at all. So the red, I will find. I will see it. It's easy enough. And I love red. Yeah, I know. Some guys aren't going to go around wearing a little red bracelet, whatever this stuff is made out of, but I don't care. Red is my favorite color, and I'm going to do it. But that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is going to talk about motives, personal motives. Uh, times when you know or you see that someone else's motives just aren't pure. And you almost hate to say that because you wonder, well, what is purity actually supposed to mean? Well, I've always talked about my morals. I have three basic things that I believe should be the core for almost everything. There's a bunch of others also, but these are my main three, which are loyalty, trustworthiness, and honesty. And I believe if you start with that, everything else kind of falls in place. Now, yeah, there are times where, you know, you might have to have a modification. For instance, I think loyalty is a two-way street. If I'm loyal to you, but you do something that I definitely can't support and you know I'm not going to support like well child abuse spousal abuse or something like that or you killed someone just because you got mad I'm sorry I will be loyal to a certain extent but I'm not going to back you up on any of that kind of stuff if you actually came to me and asked me to lie for you I'm not going to be loyal to you because you're putting me in that kind of position that's not what loyalty means trustworthiness and honesty are those other two things you do something wrong, you own up to it. Now, sometimes you do something wrong in the course of trying to do something right for someone else, and that happens. And the same with, you know, the trustworthiness. Sometimes, for instance, if you're in a leadership position, which y'all know I talk about leadership on my other channel, and I, you know, do leadership, you know, every once in a while, your trustworthiness has to go to the employer. It just does, especially if you're in a leadership position. So you sometimes can't tell all the truth. I've been in that position, but, you know, I've always said, I can't say it. I'm not going to lie to people, so I don't lie, but I will say, I can't tell you anything right now. Yes, that may give something away in a way that may, you know, not necessarily be totally pure on the other side, but I think you have to know where your moral base is. You have to draw your line, and you have to decide who the people are that you need to show the most loyalty to. Now, having said that, we're going to talk about motives because I see some things here and there. I'm not going to get into any specific details, certainly not right now, but I see some things that are disturbing. And the thing is, they're so blatant that I can't believe the people who are doing them are missing it. They, they, they have to know. And, you know, you just get into this place where you say, how can you be so stupid? How can you not think that so-and-so isn't going to notice it or that the rest of us don't know it. So I've got seven things that I'm going to point out. And y'all let me know, if anyone's ever watching any of these videos, by the way, <laughs> y'all let me know what you think about these things in determining if someone's motives are pure. Actually, check yourself if you're in a leadership position or if you find that sometimes a lot of people aren't responding to you in the ways you think they should or you hope they should. Maybe these are issues some of you have. So here we go. Number one, when you're stumbling all over your words, when you get into that spot where you're, uh, he, he, it looks like you're trying to find the right words to say all the time. You know, if you're looking not to hurt someone's feelings, that's almost expected. But if everything you're saying, if you're caught on something and you're, hey, uh, well, I, 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 you know, uh, well, you know what? You're stumbling over your words. Your motives probably aren't all that pure. Number two, when you can't look people in the eye. 
this one is the strangest thing in the world where you know that someone has just done something wrong and you call them on it or someone else calls them on it and they can't look you in the face. They just can't. You know that's just the epitome of sneakiness. But that just shows you their motives aren't right. Number three, when they're making stuff up. It's unbelievable how people come up with these things that they invent in their own minds and they tell other people this without thinking that some of those people might like you better than them and they're going to tell you what they said. Why would you have to make stuff up? If someone is bad, if someone is a bad person or someone is a bad employee or someone just does all kind of bad stuff, there's no sense in making things up about them. If someone is good and someone works well and someone is appreciated by everyone else, why make up bad stuff about them? Are you really that jealous? Are you really that insecure about yourself? Please. But yeah, I see that all the time. Number four, when you're claiming credit for what for work or things that other people did, and they know it. One of my biggest gripes about some leaders is that they won't share or they won't let someone else have the glory because they're afraid that if they let someone else have the glory, that it's going to make them look bad. You know, in my field of healthcare finance, for instance. One of the things that's very strange is that there's a lot of people who I call during my marketing calls who don't want to meet me. And, you know, I'm in that weird position because I'm one of the few minorities who does what I do. And your first thought that you always hope isn't true is, well, okay, are they doing this because I'm minority? Well, some of these people you know don't know who you are. They didn't go look at your website. They haven't seen your face. Maybe they haven't seen you at a net networking thing. So, you know, okay, that can't be it. I call myself Mitch Mitchell. Y'all know I'm Mitch Mitchell here. That's not my real name, but my real name isn't one of those names, although I never say it, where anyone's going to know beforehand whether I'm black or not. I don't think I speak with what some people might say a black accent. I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I just can't hear it, but I don't think that's it. What I know for a fact, and this is a shame, but it's a fact, Probably 90 to 95 percent of the people who I have to contact to market my specific set of skills, which are, you know, pretty valuable if you ask me. You know, I helped a hospital make it $730 million in one year. <laughs> yes, I did. So I think that's pretty valuable. But I end up having to try to teach them about this thing that they're over that they know nothing about. As strange as that sounds, that's very big in healthcare. It probably happens in a lot of other businesses also, but I don't know. So sometimes, you know, people want to claim credit for stuff that they don't know, and that's wrong. And when the other people know it, and if they work for you, they don't want to share things with you anymore. And that's just horrible because you should always have people who are willing to help the company, which helps themselves. And if you promote those people, not just like like give them a different position, but you say, you know, but this person did really good and you give them some kind of honor. Maybe you throw some kind of party. You know, everyone doesn't look for money all the time. But if you show that kind of thing, people will do almost anything for you. That's number four. Number five, when you can't find anyone who agrees with anything you have to say. You know, <laughs> this one is another strange one because a lot of people think that just because someone is in a position of authority that they know everything. It happens a lot with consultants. Uh, one of the nicest things someone ever said to me one time, and this was many years ago, is you're not like other consultants. I said, why is that? And they said, because if you don't know something, you'll say, I don't know something, but I'll find out. Other people just make stuff up or they come up with an idea on the fly that turns out to be wrong later on. You know, that's never been my style. But you will find that there are people who just have to f give you an answer right off the bat. No thought about it. No thinking, well, we'll just do this. We'll just do this. We'll just do this. A lot of times that stuff is wrong. You should never do that. I know people who are definite authorities and experts on something who will very rarely do stuff like that on the same token. I go see my doctor every once in a while. It's rare, but I go see him. And usually within two or three minutes, he already knows what's wrong. <laughs> Maybe my stuff is just so common that he sees it all the time that it's not a big deal. He hasn't been wrong yet. So what can I say? So you do have some of those folks, but, you know, he's a doctor. Those guys have to get through a lot of people so they can make a lot of money. So now that's five. Number six, when people aren't listening to you. Something that I hear some leaders say is, you know, I try to tell people things and no one wants to do what I say. And I'm the person in charge. You know, you earn respect. 
It doesn't matter what you do. Do you play games? Are you a leader in a company? Are you a manager, director, whatever? Do you drive people on a bus? No matter what you do, if you work with other people, you have to earn respect. You have to show people, one, that you know what you're doing, or two, that you're willing to learn or you're willing to help. And if you're not willing to do those types of things, if it always has to be about you, and, by the way, it's about you, but you're wrong <laughs> more often than not, no one's going to listen to you. And you can't just demand it just because you're in a certain position. That just doesn't work. Think about it this way. When a football coach, basketball coach, baseball coach, hockey coach, or whomever can't get everyone to listen to them to the point that they don't win at all, they get ousted. That happens in other companies too. Eventually, if you're the person at the top and you got all those other people, it's easier to get rid of you than everyone else. And if you're in a department where you're not the leader, but you're just someone who's just so contrary all the time and you bring everyone else down and you ruin the mood of the department, you got to go. I've gotten rid of people like that. You cannot destroy the team. And number seven, when it's all about you and you should know it, but you don't. Sometimes you do, but most of the time you don't. When everything that's going on is something that you think you should know or you should be doing or you should be getting the credit for and you're looking to get promoted or you're looking for this accolade or all these things, but it's not something that you did, then that's wrong, that your motives aren't pure. If you're an employee and you're only goal is to get people to notice what it is that you do so that you can be promoted or so you can stand out or so you can gloat to someone did you hear what so and so said about me or whatever your motives aren't pure and you're just you know that just doesn't work you know there is this thing about team now sometimes there is this thing where it has to be about you I mean truthfully I've done some videos where I said you know what you have to think about you first you always have to take care of yourself first because no one else is going to take care of you. At the same time, while you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of everybody else. You know, like I said, I'm an independent consultant. And I know that my reputation lies in going into a place and helping it be better in some way before I leave. That's my reputation. And I go in knowing that. But I also go in hoping that if I find something that people don't know or people need some help with, that they're going to let me help them to learn it and to get better so that they will retain this thing when I leave because I'm not going in to stay permanently. <laughs> I don't want that kind of work ever again. But I want people to feel that they know this thing. And I always give credit to those people. I say, you know what? So-and-so did a great job. They've learned how to do this. Or they came up with this idea and we do that. That's how it's supposed to go. Now, is it about me in a way because I'm there, I'm trying to produce, I'm trying to make things look good. I'm hoping to get that letter that says, hey, you know what, Mitch Mitchell came in here and he helped us do good. But it's always also about other people. You have to be willing to share the credit. You have to be willing to let other people at least have that opportunity. If you have to be the one who goes in there and says, oh my God, this whole thing is messed up, let's get it fixed, then you do that. But you bring people along. You get people to buy into it. Sometimes that's difficult. So you go for those little victories. That's what I like to call them. Those things where you do a few things here and there. Shows people, one, that you care, and two, that you know what you're talking about. And three, if you're open to their input, you have to show that. Sometimes you have to take some things and say, you know what? This is something that someone else wanted to do. Let's put that into practice. Maybe they know. Because if you think you know it all for every single thing in the world, kid yourself. So, are your motives pure? I just gave you seven things to think about. Do you see people who fit some of these things? Let me know. This is Mitch Mitchell. Hope you all have a great day and loving my red Fitbit. You take care.